Three secrets that narcissists don't want you to know and one secret you must keep hidden. Hello everyone. And thank you for returning to our YouTube channel. Today's discussion revolves around unearthing three clandestine facts that a narcissist fervently wishes to keep hidden away from you. As we traverse through the course of this video, I will intersperse an additional secret, one that is your own, and must remain concealed from the narcissist. Let's embark on this journey. Our first revelation is this, the narcissist fervently hopes that you remain oblivious to their thought process during their silent treatment sessions. The reason? If you were to truly comprehend the machinations of their mind, if you were to genuinely understand their thought process, you would not resort to pleading, nor would you shed tears. You wouldn't relentlessly pursue them, attempting to coax them out of their silent treatment. You wouldn't even contemplate trying to reason with them. You would not spend your entire day in a state of rumination, questioning your actions, scrutinizing and over-scrutinizing, and racking your brain to find a solution to mend things. In fact, you would do none of these. Instead, you would choose to escape. So, what really happens in their mind when they subject you to the silent treatment? An incredible phenomenon just occurred, I merely ceased communication. I'm simply disregarding her. Observe the devastation and despair she embodies. It's as though I am the vital air she breathes to survive. Without my presence, she appears shattered, on the brink of demise. I feel so powerful, so exceptional. Look at the significance I hold, look at the immense power I wield. With such ease, I can shatter an individual. The previous instance lasted for two weeks, and it seemed she was on the verge of madness, as if she would tear out every strand of her hair. I'm curious about the possible outcome if I extended this for a month. The sensation of being needed and admired, being of importance, is truly exhilarating. Whenever I sense a wave of boredom or inadequacy, for some inexplicable reason, all I need to do is employ the silent treatment, and I am swiftly reminded of the potent influence I truly possess. The second essential point that needs to be brought to light is a specific strategy that the narcissist would rather keep you in the dark about. This strategy pertains to the right approach to their smear campaigns. As many of us have unfortunately experienced, narcissists are adept at slinging mud. This is especially true if you have chosen to discard them, or in instances where they have chosen to discard you. The narcissist feeds off the narcissistic supply that is generated when they can manipulate mutual friends into viewing them as the victim and you as the antagonist. This is a game they play with a disturbing amount of pleasure. The stakes are raised even higher when they manage to turn your family, friends, and even people who didn't know the narcissist before, against you. This includes new acquaintances and new friends. They revel in this discord, and often, this discord is sowed by mishandling the smear campaign. Narcissists are well aware that we are ill-equipped to combat their manipulative lies. It is a bitter pill to swallow, but the truth doesn't always emerge victorious, as much as we'd like to believe otherwise. This is especially true when you're dealing with a master manipulator like a narcissist. When you attempt to expose the truth, that this person is spreading false information about you, sullying your reputation with intent, and portraying themselves as the victim when they are indeed the abuser, you can find yourself in a precarious position. The more you try to expose the narcissist, the less people are inclined to believe you. Instead, they sway towards the narcissist's side. So, what is the right way to handle the smear campaign, a method that the narcissist doesn't want you to know? The most effective way to manage it is by simply carrying on with your life, regardless of what they say about you. Act as if their words do not affect you. Refrain from defending yourself, stay silent, and avoid the temptation of pointing fingers. These actions speak louder than any words could, and it is the best possible response to such a situation. Understanding how to navigate the situation when a narcissist is spreading their smear campaign can be challenging. It becomes even more difficult when they accuse you of the same actions, even when you're not participating in their game. They have an uncanny ability to reverse the roles of victim and abuser, making it incredibly hard not to get drawn into their manipulative tactics. However, the most effective course of action you can take is to remain silent. It may seem counterintuitive, especially when you feel the urge to defend yourself against their accusations. 
But, resist the temptation to spend your time and energy trying to paint the narcissist in a negative light. When you adopt this strategy, you are essentially cutting off their narcissistic supply. Consider the narcissist's need for narcissistic supply as comparable to the need for oxygen. They reach for the oxygen mask only to find that the tank is empty. This is the predicament they find themselves in when they attempt to provoke you into joining their smear campaign, and you choose not to participate. The tank is devoid of what they crave, there is no narcissistic supply for them. This is a situation they despise and one they'd rather you not adopt. The most appropriate course of action is to do nothing in response to their smear campaign. Instead, focus on moving forward with your life. Keep yourself busy, engage in activities that you enjoy, and strive to maintain a positive outlook. Concentrate entirely on your own well-being and personal growth, rather than getting caught up in what the narcissist is doing. Narcissists thrive on the chaos and discord they create. By refusing to participate in their games, you are taking away their power. By focusing on your own happiness and refusing to let their actions affect you, you are taking a stand against their manipulative tactics. This is the most effective way to handle a narcissist smear campaign. Third point, the covert narcissist, also known as the hidden narcissist, doesn't want you to realize that they are fully conscious of their abusive tendencies. They don't want you to recognize that they understand their actions are harmful. How can we discern that this narcissist is aware of their wrongdoings? Let's ponder this for a moment. When they are alone, narcissists engage in behaviors such as screaming, yelling, insulting, acting crudely, and general unkindness. However, when in public, especially around individuals they desire to impress, their demeanor changes drastically. This is because image is of utmost importance to the covert narcissist, often more so than their authentic selves. Therefore, in public settings, they present themselves as the epitome of kindness, patience, and calmness. If they are capable of such drastic behavior modification, appearing virtually perfect in public while being a nightmare in private, it's because they recognize their private behavior is improper. If they were unaware of the inappropriate nature of their actions, they would behave the same way consistently. However, they don't want you to realize that they are aware of their problematic behavior. If you knew, you would abandon any hope of reaching out to them. Narcissists often portray themselves as victims, keeping you focused on their difficult pasts or challenging circumstances. They want you to view them as victims, fostering hope that they will one day recognize their faults and change. But the reality is quite different. They are aware of their actions and have no desire to change. They relish the narcissistic supply they receive from others' admiration and the power they hold to control and manipulate you. This dynamic is satisfying to them, but they don't want you to realize they understand their actions are wrong, as then you would know they have no intention of changing. Once you understand that the narcissist exhibits two contrasting personalities by choice, you begin to grasp that you are merely a pawn in a game you never wished to participate in. And inevitably, you'll want to escape. Narcissists have a unique way of conducting themselves that can make people around them feel perplexed and doubtful about their own perceptions. Their actions are designed to maintain control over others, and there are certain things they would rather you not know, as this knowledge could lead to the dissolution of the toxic relationship. So, if you're in a situation where you're dealing with a narcissist, it's important to remember these points. If you've been reacting to the situation in a manner dictated by the narcissist, it's time to re-evaluate your responses. Consider how you might alter your behavior to safeguard yourself from further abuse. Keep in mind, your aim is not to change the narcissist, as that is neither your duty nor within your power. Your focus should be on self-protection. Recognizing these behaviors of the narcissist is the initial step towards achieving this. It's the first step towards regaining control over your life and well-being. Now, let's move on to the crucial secret that you possess, which you wouldn't want the narcissist to discover, is your growing understanding of narcissism and narcissistic personality disorder. At the beginning stages of this journey, some of us still hold on to the idea of helping the narcissist change. We learn that it's a disorder, an illness. This knowledge can lead us to think, if only I could explain to them that they have this disorder, maybe we could work together to help them heal. However, it's important to understand that a narcissist does not wish to heal. 
If you disclose your newfound knowledge about narcissistic personality disorder, you risk severing any support, validation, or link to reality you are starting to regain. The narcissist will ensure that you can't get the help you're seeking. If you participate in social media groups about dealing with narcissistic people, the narcissist may persuade you that your involvement in these groups threatens your relationship. They may convince you that these groups will ruin what potential your relationship has. When a narcissist speaks positively about your relationship, you might believe them in the early stages, which can risk removing valuable information that helps you gain mental clarity. This is one reason why you don't want them to know. Another reason is that you'll acquire tools that will empower you. However, if the narcissist becomes aware of these tools, they might use them against you, making it harder for you to learn and use these tools. Moreover, they can learn to be more effective narcissists by understanding the tools that are meant to help you. This doesn't make them better people, but rather, better narcissists. They can conceal their abusive behavior more effectively, causing further confusion for you. This is another risk. The third risk of disclosing your belief that they have a narcissistic personality disorder pertains to your vulnerability in the early stages. You're still in a learning phase, delicate, confused, and highly susceptible. Narcissists have a knack for manipulating behaviors and suggesting that you are the actual narcissist. This distortion can be incredibly perplexing for someone in the initial stages of understanding narcissistic abuse, leading to immense confusion. Many enter therapy questioning, am I the narcissist, which is often a strong indication that they're not. But the mere presence of doubt, the level of confusion they experience, is usually a result of the narcissist's manipulation upon discovering that you're learning about narcissism, causing disorientation. It's essential to be aware of the things the narcissist doesn't want you to know. Examine your behavior. If you find yourself ensnared in their manipulative games, start empowering yourself by altering the dynamics. Focus on controlling not the narcissist, but your actions and yourself. By doing this, you're safeguarding yourself and continuing to gain mental clarity until you're robust enough to make decisions that genuinely protect you from emotional abusers. Thank you for joining us in today's discussion. We hope this information empowers you to take control of your actions and protect your mental well-being. As we conclude, remember, you're not alone in this journey. Continue to educate yourself, seek support, and most importantly, trust your instincts. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share with those who might need it, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insightful content. Until next time and take care of yourselves.